Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 390. We're continuing with our lesson theme, Reality Transit. This will be part 9. Scripture teaches two great realities exist. One of light, one of darkness, forever separated from each other. Genesis 1 verse 4. God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. So they will never be connected. They will always be separate. Scripture teaches the darkness reality is the remnant of a destroyed creation. Genesis 1-2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So darkness came into being as a result of this chaotic condition that overtook the creation. Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture indicates all life, all life, Inhabiting the darkness universe, human and non-human are trapped within it forever. With the exception of those who are born again. All others, human and non-human, are trapped in this darkness reality. Turn to Colossians 1 verse 13. Who hath delivered us from the power? The word power there comes from the Greek term in, in, exousia, mm -hmm. which means authority. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So anybody who is born again is freed from the authority of darkness and brought into a different state of existence, a state of light. Scripture indicates the darkness universe, where we currently are, will be regenerated at the Lord's last coming by having the darkness driven out by light. The <laughs> darkness universe currently dominating secondary creation one day is going to be driven out and replaced by light. We're going to see this in the scriptures. Isaiah 60, verses 1 to 2. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, 
and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Who is the thee that he's talking about that's supposed to arise? We find out later in the scripture. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, current darkness, and gross darkness the people. The specific darkness that's coming out of the overall darkness and affecting the minds of the human race. This is the era we're entering into. Notice what it goes on to say. <clears throat> but the Lord shall arise upon thee. Again, we have this thee. We'll find out who it is. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. <clears throat> and the Gentiles shall come to thy light. Kings to the brightness of thy rising. <clears throat> Now, you will find who the V is and who the darkness covers in verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. So it's talking about the earth is the subject of the scriptures. The earth is being told, Arise, shine, for thy night is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. So it's a prophecy letting us know that the current condition... Yes, it's going to get worse. Darkness, <clears throat> gross darkness is going to envelop the earth, but it ultimately is going to be driven out by the light <clears throat> that the Lord will bring and that the saints will manifest and that the creation, the light that's in the creation of light is going to manifest into this current creation of darkness. We're going to see how this is going to be done. So did we just now find out who the we was? Earth. Earth. Planet. Planet Earth. <coughs> yes. <coughs> Scripture teaches the life forms human and non-human inhabiting the, dar the darkness regions will be driven off the earth with the darkness. So those that love darkness, those that embrace it, as it reaches its zenith of intensity, are going to be driven off the earth with the darkness by the light that ultimately is going to come to displace it. Turn to Job, 38th chapter. We're going to read verses 12 to 13. Job 38, 12 to 13. <clears throat> Hast thou commanded the morning <coughs> since thy days? Now, the word morning comes from the Hebrew term bokur. It's talking about the morning light. Hast thou commanded the morning light since thy days? In other words, since you have been born, have you commanded the morning light? And cause the day spring to know its place. <clears throat> the word day spring comes from a Hebrew term, shahar, which means dawn. So what he's talking about here is light intensity. Yes. Josie, it sounds as if the light that you're talking about doesn't come from the sun. It's not. It's talking about an eternal light in the primary the creation. The day spring and the light. Yes. But yes. So it's it's not as a result of the sun bringing light. 
because it's not called we're gonna, sunlight. We're going to continue with this. We're just focusing on the fact that light ultimately is going to drive out this current darkness. Light from several different sources. See, yeah, okay, go ahead. <clears throat> so he makes known the reality of the morning light. He makes known the reality of the dawn light. Then it goes on. <clears throat> Verse 13, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it. So this light, <clears throat> the morning and the dawn, at some point are going to converge upon the ends of this planet and it's going to shake the wicked out of the world along with the darkness that they are part of. Turn to, <clears throat> yes? Where's the great central something? It's not there. It's talking about the it doesn't primary yet exist. creation. It doesn't yet exist. It exists. It exists. But it's not talking about it in the scripture. Remember we said it's going to be light from several different, different sources. sources. Okay. This is one source, primary creation. Now, turn to Malachi, fourth chapter. Verse one to three. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble. It's talking about the wicked in this world, in the darkness. <clears throat> and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the sun, S-U-N, this is the great solar sun you're asking about, son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and he shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. So when the light of this great central sun hits, it's going to be a healing light as well as a destructive light. So, yes. Why is he giving it wings? The wings are symbolic of, uh, when you look at the sun, <clears throat> you see, <clears throat> uh, in some places they look at great galaxies and they look like they have arms. Mm -hmm. Some look like they have wings. They're emanating light. Uh, God <coughs> is uh, imagining in times where he's got wings. Take you and put you under my wing. Symbolic of the influence that comes from <coughs> whatever it is this source of light is. When, when, he, when he's referring, put you under my wing, it's referring to a bird that puts his birds underneath its wing when it flies away. No. It's a similarity. Yes. Jesus says, How often would I have covered you <coughs> my wings as doth a hen cover her chest? Mm -hmm. There's a psalm that talks about putting yourself under the wings of God. It's symbolic indicating the protection from the <coughs> the manifestation that will cover you. It's like a bird's wing, basically. <clears throat> it talks about angels' wings, God's wings, birds. The word has to come out with the 
scripture. So this is referring to the sun, his extremities, the light coming from his extremities is going to be a healing light when it encounters <coughs> the righteous of earth. <coughs> it's also going to be a destructive light when it encounters the unrighteous of earth. Along with the light from the primary creation that we just read, the morning and the dawn light. So it gives a connotation of caring or love, Mr. Jones. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's what it's meant to do. All these light sources happen at the same time. Yes. Okay. The day it's referring to in that day. Well, that day Malachi is referring to the same day Job, <coughs> Elohim, and Job is referring to. The light is going to engulf, engulf the earth, and it's going to drive out the, the wicked in Job. Light is also going to engulf the earth from the great central sun. It's going to involve healing for the righteous, destruction for the wicked. So this light from different sources is going to effectively drive out the darkness from this current, not just the planet, but the whole universe. Let's continue, we aren't through yet. Verse three, Malachi chapter four. You shall tread down the wicked, for there shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. So he's talking here about the light from the great central sun is literally going to burn up the physical bodies <coughs> of the humans, life forms, and uh, <coughs> the spirits, the souls, with the darkness are going to be exited. Where are they going to go? Find out. Turn to Matthew, 8th chapter. We'll read verses 11 and 12. Scripture indicates this darkness will be driven with its inhabitants, with its inhabitants beyond the planet Earth and be known as outer darkness. Matthew 8, verses 11 to 12. Isn't outer darkness where we find the hypocrites? Um, hypocrites basically, <clears throat> no, because the hypocrites go into torment be long before this happens. This the hypocrites are going directly to hell. The conditions of hell, brimstone, fire, a whole shine, is going to overtake them on the earth. The people who are going to outer darkness are going to be cast off the earth, beyond the earth, with the darkness in a region in which the darkness will take up residence. So that region, outer darkness, mm -hmm. is the implication that it manifests only at the time in which it's needed. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. So it doesn't exist somewhere already. No, that's all. Right. Well, it does exist, right here. What did you just say? Manages only at the time... Manifests, the manifests, becomes apparent only at the time at which it's needed. Of which is needed. Okay. No, it's here. You look out. Look out the window. That's what outer darkness is, is, is what it's outer darkness. Yeah. Okay. It's just not driven out beyond Earth. That's why it's called outer darkness. Okay. The same darkness everybody's right. dealing with. Right. With the loin, the the, the um, um, morning cloth of darkness, mantle, space-time continuum that you're seeing here. All that is going to wind up behind the earth, replaced by the light from the great central sun, the primary creation here, with what's called the regeneration. The earth is going to be renewed by those lights. The corruption is going to be exited by those lights. Josie, it just it amazes me that you're telling us all this, and it sounds like a really nice restoration, but it's a temporary restoration. Sure. Yes. The thousand year restoration. Well, let's go on. Matthew 8, 11 to 12.
And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Cast out by what? The light from the great central sun, the light of the glory of the elder sun in the prototokos. Your lights, my lights, are going to be integral in restoring this creation. So coming back to the outer darkness, since you were pointing at it, I was thinking it's a spiritual location because the bodies have been burnt up, all that would be left would be the spirits of these, these people mm -hmm. and they go to reside in this outer darkness. Remember what we said, mm -hmm. outer darkness is a combination of physical and spiritual, which accommodates both. Let's go on. Let me, let me, yes. Okay, so. I've been listening to you guys, and it's interesting that you have what you have to say. <laughs> so, so, Mr. Jones, yes. I realize in, an, in, in a couple minutes here that we have this restorative power, and it's not for the earth only. It's for the creation. Yes. So, only the earth and the heavens are going to go away. Not the creation. Yes? What was corrupted? Old secondary creation is going to be restored. Starting, starting with the earth. The kingdom starts in Jerusalem. Manifested. Remember what Jesus said, like a mustard, we're in a mustard seed. It starts at a small point and it envelops everything. Starts earth outer darkness and then it reaches to the furthest ends of the secondary creation. The Lord says in Isaiah that the heavens are going to be stuck in. They're going to be replanted because everything is going to be wiped out. So at the end of the millennium when everything is translated into the spiritual eternity you you would have to say that what we're calling the secondary create the, the creation, the rejuvenated secondary creation, is folded into, absorbed into the primary creation. No. It, does it exist as a separate? Does not exist. Doesn't exist. Goes out of existence. The elements, fire, air, earth, water that make the secondary creation are burnt up. Okay. Yes, there, there's no matter at all. Everything at that point is spiritual. It's based off of the spiritual element, light, not matter. So the point that outer darkness, well, the answer is it has to change. Right now, it contains spiritual and physical. At that point, when everything is burnt up and everything translates into the spiritual realm, there is no more physical. So right. outer darkness is a strictly spiritual region. It's, again, darkness is eternal. Sure. But, it's a, but I think you described it before as a location or an area of which the Father has turned his back to. Yeah, well, in this particular case, the location is the creation mm -hmm. called the heavens and the earth, which were destroyed by the revolt of Lucifer. Darkness came into existence and became the reality that is currently the secondary creation. Reality of corruption, physical and spiritual. A reality of matter, tenuous and nebulous matter, but still matter. Everything dealing with darkness at this point is of a corrupted, you cannot corrupt physical, I mean spiritual, you can only corrupt physical but you have tenuous physical you go into the astral planes you don't think you're in a material reality but you are because it composed of earth tenuous earth at the time that this darkness is displaced by light 
what's being taken, what's happening is the corrupted, corruption element is being removed and restoration of what currently is dormant manifests. Yes. So are you saying darkness will no longer exist? It won't no longer exist here as a reality, the way it does now. People are affected by darkness. It affects your mind, it affects your body, it affects everything because it's a state of existence. When the light takes place, that state of existence is going to be removed. There is no corrupting darkness that's going to be allowed to exist in the secondary creation. Everything's going to be light. You look at the sky, it's light. Seven times brighter than it currently is on earth. Beyond the earth, it's light. You're looking at the heavens. Everything is light. No darkness. Where's the darkness? The darkness is confined to regions beyond the earth. So that's the point. Is it necessary? Is there something that's going to be done with the darkness? Yeah. It's going to be used as a place of judgment. But the point I think that's being made is it's an eternal. Yeah, bear with me, guys. I'm giving me, trying to give you description okay. to answer your question. All right. All right. Don't get mad. I'm not getting mad. I'm <laughs> just trying to get off with it. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's better for me to read the scriptures than try to explain it because you get a better understanding. Of it. But you know we enjoy it more when we roll around the floor a little bit. <laughs> more fun than Okay, we read Matthew 8, 11 to 12. Turn to Luke 13, 22 to 30. This gives a little light on Matthew 8, the scripture we just read. He went through the cities and villages teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, so they asked him a question. Are going to be a lot of people saved or is only be a few? And he's responding to the question. Strive to enter in at the straight gate, for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Many are going to strive to enter into the narrow gate. They're not going to be able. Why? Because it will be too late. That's what he's trying to tell them. What is he trying to tell them? He's trying to tell them that there's going to come a time when the masses are going to see the truth that is coming and then want to make it good but it's going to be too late how is it that they understand because they see everything in motion heading toward the result that they know the scripture has promised them they want to get in on the gravy train at that point but it's too late yeah at that point you don't need faith yes <clears throat> this is what he's talking to them about verse 25 when once the master of the house <clears throat> is risen up and is shut to the door and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. He shall say, he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence you are. In other words, he's talking about the ma masses. That at that point, understand the scriptures. <clears throat> and are in outer darkness. Weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth, wanting to have it reversed. They're gonna be like the rich man. <clears throat> They're gonna be able to see everything that's going on from where they are. But they're in the gulf. That gulf between <clears throat> Lazarus and the rich man is going to be where outer darkness is going to be confined. Notice what it goes on to say. <clears throat> then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence. Thou hast torn in our streets. 
But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not. Whence you are, depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrust out. Where are they going to be thrust out? Outer darkness. <coughs> then it, they will see it for what it is. Then they will understand what they missed. But it will be two aces. The door will be closed. You'll not never be able to transit back into the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of light. You'll see it. You'll hear everything that's going on. But you'll never participate. And the knowledge of that is going to bring such an agony, a torment, that they'll lose it. So since the people we're talking about at one point were born in Christians, and they have been translated from darkness to light. Mm -hmm. At the point that we're reading here, mm -hmm. do you describe that as them being translated back into darkness? Oh, before then. These people are all judged. How do they judge? He cuts them off. Okay. Yeah, you're born again, but the spirit is no longer going to be in you. It takes the spirit back. Gotcha. Okay. And they take on the status of an unsaved <clears throat> person, just right. like the wicked servant who didn't do what he was called to do in Matthew 24. <clears throat> One servant was faithful. He went and he taught and he fed. The other guy corralled around and did his thing. The Lord comes back and judges him. What does it do? He says cuts him asunder. What does that mean? It takes the spirit from him. Mm. and leaves him in a position of unsaved. And then he points him his portion with the hypocrites. Hell. And since that person has diminished the voice of the Spirit for who knows how long. Do you imagine that he would know the difference between having the Spirit which is quenched and not having the Spirit at all? Oh, sure he knows. That doesn't stop him from wanting to have, the, you know, have his, his cake back oh, of course, again. Yeah. Yeah. But the point I was getting to is he doesn't know it yet because he hasn't experienced it yet. Yes. After he experiences it, oh, he's going to be in agony. Sure. Yeah, the spirit taken away from you, but by the same token, he's going to see his destiny. He's going to be in his destiny. Yeah. Now, you might picture this. You have outer darkness. You picture outer darkness as a vast region that exists. You're on the earth. You're looking down because they get pitched down into outer darkness. The earth is in an elevated position. They're in a suppressed position. Vast, dark, black region. Overlaying this vast, dark, black region is what's called the lake of fire. So you have, if you could look at it as a sort of a uh, bullseye with two circles. Mm -hmm. The smaller circle here, the larger circles beyond it. Larger circle representing out of darkness, smaller circle representing the lake of fire. Judgments are going to take place. Turn to Matthew 25. Well, this takes place at the second coming. Verse 40 to 41. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, and as much as you have done it unto one of the if, if, I say unto you, as much as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angel. So outer darkness is there. The lake of fire is there. The judgment is going to determine which one the individual under judgment is going to go into. Commensurate with the offense. Commensurate with the sin life they have lived. These that didn't minister to him 
but people of the saints did these go into the lake of fire Matthew 25 verse 30 And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This happens at the same time. He's judging the nations. Some are going to go into outer darkness. Some are going to go into the lake of fire. <coughs> Turn to Revelation 20. verse 15 and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire Judgment, either in the lake of fire or out of darkness, is reserved for particular individuals. Turn to Jude. Verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, or left their own habitation, here reserved in everlasting chains, under darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. This judgment, humans and non humans, are going to experience. Either the lake of fire, or out of darkness. Turn to verse 13, Jude 9, um, Jude verse 13. Excuse me. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. False teachers, false prophets, they're going to be reserved into outer darkness forever. Are we understanding that the raging waves are also false teachers? Yes. Okay. This is describing a characteristic sure. of them. Sure. <coughs> so, if the If the ten uh, scribes and Pharisees are not given to outer darkness, are you saying they're going to the lake of fire? No, the tears uh, the tears of Jesus' generation. Mm. That's specific. It talks about on this generation come judgment that won't come on other generations because you saw me you denied me they are going to the fire regions of hell not out of darkness the lake of fire yes right okay yes so i didn't imagine that their punishment would be less than out of darkness very severe yes yeah. along with satan the false prophet and the antichrist the beast they're all going to be in lake of fire but not necessarily at the same time. Okay, same so everyone's the same place. So for the lake of fire, everyone's held until that uh, that uh, great white throne judgment. <coughs> they go into the lake of fire before before the great white. They don't get judged. Okay. Satan is not going to stand before the Lord. Right, just straight. And have all this stuff. Go down. He go he pass go. Right, that's it. That's right, okay. and that's true for the everyone. Beast. He's got. Okay. False prophet. No judging for them at right. all. 
but it, including, when well, you say no judgment, including those of Jesus' generations who didn't believe him. They rejected him. Uh, all of them basically are reserved for the most intense punishment mm -hmm. that there is. Now, the, the difference basically in the punishment between out of darkness and the lake of fire is one is isolation and the other is torment. It's both torment, right. but it's different states of torment. torment. And these guys are going to uh, be in a situation of such isolation, which talks about the death region. Isolation. You feel, you have the feeling of such loneliness and isolation and nobody at all anywhere light years close to you. The intense uh, awareness, I guess the closest you could think about it is if you're an astronaut and you're doing a spacewalk and you suddenly, your line snaps and you're floating out in space watching <coughs> a space station retreat into the horizon, there you are the vastness of space nobody anywhere near you to help you can hear you or nothing you're, you're really out of darkness so what's happening darkness will always be a place of what's, cons what's considered torment here the people that choose it because they're deceived into it are going to be permanent residents of it when it's taken off the earth and put beyond the earth as a place of torment. They are going to be right there to experience it and only in a greater way. And other people are going to ultimately be confined into it who <coughs> uh, at a different age didn't experience that particular torment but it's going to be reserved for them at the time of Jesus coming to judge the nations <clears throat> so what we find is a reversal basically Genesis, the first chapter. The earth was created beautiful. Paradise. So beautiful, the angels, the dawn stars, glorify God by singing and shouting. It's going to be restored basically the same way. Light is going to be restored to it. Life is going to be restored to it. Beauty is going to be restored to it. Utility is going to be restored to it. Only this time, <coughs> the glorification will be in the prototokis. Because it's the prototokis that are going to be doing the restoration. <coughs> it's going to be <coughs> a testimony to the greatness of the Father because he had his son create the heavens and the earth. Now his sons are going to restore the heavens and the earth. So God's going to get greater glory the second time than he did the first time. Yes. Alright. The way I understand it is that we are going to, he is his sons, are going to restore it for the first time to the extent of its glory. Okay. But it's going to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. it, it just, okay, so it's, it's polluted now. It needs to be erased now. But no, we're going to restore it and get it back to where it's originally intended to go for the millennium mm -hmm. existence. Yes. And, you know, it's interesting how God did everything for the sons. 
but he's going to restore, he's going to replenish, he's going to, a planet for humans but a small portion will not go re, re, go to hell. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. It's amazing to me. All has to do with the kingdom. It's key. This is all done to show we, we, when, when God speaks he has a purpose. He intended the creation to manifest that purpose. It hasn't. Lucifer threw a monkey wrench into it. Well, God's not going to allow that to maintain. His purpose is going to come fully through. He had a purpose for the church to function a certain way. Well, you had <coughs> the tares, false prophets, false teachers get in and you see the result. The church is nowhere near what it was intended. Well, that doesn't stop God. Millennium, <coughs> the gathering, I'll put it that way, not, not the millennium, but the gathering is going to be the showcase of which the church is supposed to function. God is showing the creation. You can't stop my will. You think you can, but I'm showing you, demonstrating to you, what I said here is going to come to pass. And no matter what you do, it is not going to stop my word nor my will. God's going to get to glory. When this thing goes out of existence, Second Peter, the third chapter, the elements burn up. Yes, it's, a, it's going to burn up a beautiful creation. Because there won't be any sin allowed at the end of the millennium. Before they can do what they want to do, it's going to go out of existence. But, what's going to replace it? Turn to Revelation 21st chapter. Verse 1. <clears throat> and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. I'm going to ask both of you guys a question. Do you think that the creation knows about the existence of the new heavens and the new earth? Yes. It's hidden. 50% 50, 50 chance. Of getting mm -hmm. that it's hidden. <coughs> they're going to see a formerly beautiful creation go out of existence, but they're going to see a far more glorious creation replace it. Okay. But okay. Since, since, since the rich man who is in the old creation mm -hmm. can see Abraham and Lazarus and talk to them and he knows they're not in his reality yeah. he knows he representing the second creation knows that the new creation exists no he does he doesn't know where they are he knows they're not in his environment he doesn't know anything at all about it. how would he know that's interesting that's new covenant revelation how would he know because he said tell Lazarus to dip his finger and come and put it on, on his tongue yeah the understanding is that he thinks that everyone's in the same reality. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He can see into a paradise region. That's all he knows. He doesn't know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> he has no significance in anything. Mm. And that's just a part, a little granule of what you read about in Genesis, the first chapter. Look, if the Christians today don't understand, yeah, you're right. don't have a clue. You think these people were enlightened? I was being generous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what verses of 2 Peter 3 were you referring to? Uh, turn over there. Is that verse 3? Yeah, verse 10. 2 Peter 3. 
which is going to happen suddenly. But the day of the Lord <coughs> will come as a thief in the night. Nobody's going to be ready for it. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now I'll show you how quick this was. Turn back to Revelation 20. Verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and it was found no place for him. So this thing was going to happen in a matter of seconds. It's gone. And the people on it are gone. They're going to find themselves standing before this great white throne in agony. Because everything that they knew and believed in is now gone. Whole reality is gone. In the snap of a finger. That they weren't prepared for. That sounds very similar to the pastors who suddenly find themselves no longer in their you know, palatial yeah. estates. Yeah. They're in torment. They're in torment. Do you think do you think that this will have the same intensity as it will be for the pastors? Oh, greater, greater. These guys are rolling in agony. At least <clears throat> the time in which they're being dealt with, they have time to analyze what's going. They could compare where they were before right. to what's happening to them and where they are now. Mm. These people don't have a clue. The, the, the last thing they knew was that New Jerusalem was being surrounded and you had this blabbermouth edging the human race on from some kind of vantage point, maybe in the heaven, low heavens or something. And the next thing they know, they're standing before this great white throne in agony and torment because their environment is gone, their body is gone, everything, they're dead. What God judges, He doesn't <clears throat> fool around. No. He tells us before, Peter talks about right after this, He says, knowing this is going to happen, what type of a life should we organize? We should, this life, people figure, well, that's not going to happen for a thousand years. And it's going to be affecting everybody. Everybody. There's going to be some place when this happens in the creation. What we do now is preparing ourselves for the place that we're going to be. 